Welcome to the Doodad How They're Made video. I call these sculptures doodads because I couldn't think of any better word to use for them. These sculptures are built using thin cement reinforced with fiberglass sheetrock tape. The insides are coated with glitter to reflect light. All of them except the first one have a programmable LED light, either a small spotlight or a candelabra light. There are some special materials used for making these sculptures and also some special tools that are necessary. Rapid set fast setting cement products are purchased from Home Depot. Rapid set mortars used for the first two or three coats to create strength in most of the pieces. Before using the mortar, the larger aggregates are sifted out using a regular kitchen screen to make for a smoother product. Rapid set cement all is used whenever an even smoother surface is required. And for really smooth surfaces, rapid set water stop is used. This is desperate measures. This wallboard tape that I bought from Home Depot is so crappy it won't stick to anything. So I've laid it out upside down about a half inch of overlap and I'm going to use this 3M77 super toxic adhesive to make it so that it'll stick. This desperate measure to re-glue the sheetrock tape did not work, but spraying the rubber balls or other forms with a 3M adhesive works good. Most of the shapes are made using rubber balls of various sizes and any other kind of form for special shapes. This jig is used with different paddles to distort the balls from round to get various other shapes. Plastic containers and plastic sheeting formed and fastened with staples or taped are also used. Another nice tool to have is a table that the top will rotate on it. You can change the tabletop from different sizes or if it wears out you can put a new one on it. You can raise it and lower it if you want to and there's a brake here to lock it so that it won't turn. This is all made from a, a uh, table pedestal and a long jack from Harbor Freight and I've used this for probably over 30 years and it works really great. This is a diamond pad polish that I fabricated from a 48 volt 10 amp uh, adjustable power supply and a uh, 24 volt 250 watt uh, electric bicycle motor and the flex pipe, the flex uh, cable, I couldn't find what I wanted so I made one up out of three pieces of uh, quarter inch flexible tool stuff from Harbor Freight. It works okay, but it ain't the best. This is a revised uh, diamond polishing pad setup I had him use after uh, the flex shaft that you see in the video was trashed. And this is adjustable. And it runs on it's a 350 watt motor, uh, uh, variable, variable uh, voltage uh, supply, and I Proud and mounted and propped it on the sink here. And then this the sink is a is a standard uh, laundry sink, but it's plumbed with uh, removable plumbing, so that you can have cement and mud through it, and it drains into a into a uh, small uh, trash can with a plastic liner in it and the plastic liner so you can dispose of the solids and the water runs out of the top into a gravel uh, pit that the, that the uh, trash bag is on. And uh, they have a, an automatic water drip here for this movable in the sink so you can adjust it. These are some of the diamond tools that, that I use with, with the uh, one flexible shaft uh, grinder and that makes up that's pretty much my setup for the sink. This is another tool that I rigged up that's very useful for doing this kind of work. This is an airless uh, compressor 
and I modified it so that I can either blow or suck. It has a vacuum on it, and that's this attachment right here. So when I want to suck and empty a ball, I put the hose on there and run the compressor. Just want to share with you a little tip having to do with the using paint brushes in cement. A paint brush typically has to uh, brush all around the ferrule and it's clamped on with this metal thing and as you use it the cement builds up here and forces the brush out so you have a brush that looks like this. And what I found is you just take half of it off or in this case you take half of the ferrule and you put a single layer and you don't have that problem and you can use the brush a lot longer. I'm using two two stainless steel wires as reinforcement around uh, each of the holes for this particular um, shelter, and to fasten them on, this is the the treated the treated wallboard tape. Hopefully, it's stickier than it was beforehand. And the reason you have to cut it narrow is because of the diameter of the ball. And we'll find out if it sticks or not. Well, it looks like this stuff is pretty sticky. So anyway, I'll do that to both rings. Okay, I finished putting the little pieces of tape around each of the rings. And the sticky side goes to the center. I'll put one on each side of these pieces here. And I'll, inf I'll inflate the ball. And then we'll, we'll attach these to the side of the ball. Whoop, sticky side down, right. Okay, so now I'll inflate the ball. On second thought, I'll show you how the ball goes into the into the jig. You have to be sure to get the the filler hole, the air hole, to this hole here so we can remove it later. There it is. Okay, now I'll go inflate the ball. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so now the ball is inflated. We have to make these unwieldy things stick to the side. They do want to come off. Even with that added stick on this, this uh, tape doesn't work too well. But we'll see what happens. Yeah. Large giant was sticking up. I have to put that down a bit. Well, even with all that extra stick on this tape, it still sucks. It's terrible stuff. It's not going to stay on there. So 
So we'll have to do a little bit of uh, taping taping here to get this thing to stick where we want it. And you notice that the uh, fiberglass cape is cut in half so it's narrow so that it'll go around the circumference of the ball. All right, we're on our way. Okay, so I'll finish filling up the gaps now. Okay, so at this point, I've got all the tape on. The ball's reinforced all over. And just before I put uh, mud on it, I'll have to make sure that all the tape is stuck down. This, this tape is really crummy. I used to have some tape that would work really well, but even with the uh, 3M77 on it, it's just barely sticking it up. I'm going to be painting this on. And I'm going to start from the bottom. It's too thick. Got a really soupy thin mixture so it'll just lay right on. Still got to thin it some more. This stuff sets up pretty quickly. And this coat is going to be very thin. It just needs to go on and hold everything together. All right, it's time for a second coat. So I mixed up not so thin this time. So I'll put on a second coat for this guy. Okay, there you have it. Coat number two. Okay, time for a third coat. Not any different than the first or the second one. But it's getting thicker. And so on. That's how it works. Okay, it's time to lift the air out of the rubber ball and take this thing off of here. Have to unscrew one of these sides. At least. There we are. On the inside of this, I'll put a single coat of another rapid set product called Cementol. It's, uh, it's faster setting than the rapid set mortar and it's much smoother. It doesn't have nearly as, as large pieces of uh, aggregate as the, as the mortar does. So this is, let's say, this is the piece. We'll figure out what we do with it. We'll clean it up later. This is just to show, uh, give an example of 
how to make uh, to work with the ferro cement to begin with, and there'll be other places in the video to see this. But this is a, an existing piece that I use, and I'm going to make a put a small ring around the outside of it. So I've marked off, I've measured this distance for the out for the inside ring. I'm putting a line so I can find out where to put it. And I have a mark here for the outside ring also. Just to give you an idea of how you reinforce this, the ferro cement, you have to have something to paint it onto or fasten it to. And what I use is this fiberglass um, sheetrock tape. And if it sticks, it works okay. Of course, you need a good pair of scissors, too. Just give you an example here. So we're going to put on the inside one first. And just fasten a little bit on there. And tape it down. This way you can keep it in place long enough to get it long enough to get it painted, to get cement on it. There's a lot of lengthy repetition, so we'll skip the middle and show the final result to give an idea of how it's done. Okay. We'll eventually cover this whole thing with, with fiberglass tape so that it have reinforced, but Okay, I got the fiberglass on this spring, supposedly, as well as I can. I've got some rabbit set mortar mixed up, and we're just going to paint on a first coat here and go for it and see what happens. We can clean it all up later. It'll get more coats as we go. Too much, we can grind it off. If it's too little, we'll fill it in. Surface. I use a face shield and rubber gloves and a hat to keep my hair board. clean and what is called a coat apron. Oh, this name is important if you want to find this particular kind of apron. I'm going, to, I'm going to chip the ring off of the board so we can put some material on the other side and hopefully not crack it. I'm not doing so good. There we go. All right. Look at that. Polish this whole piece all down smooth. Not polish it, but uh, smooth it down. So, so that's where we're at right now.
That'll take a while. I've been grinding for a few hours here and cleaning up all three of these pieces. I got this piece uh, pretty much done. I still have to put another coat of uh, a mortar on this side and glue it all together, but we think that's what the basic idea is going to look like. So we'll proceed onward. As you can see here, the uh, fabricated parts for holding the light, the uh, bulb in place, have been all manufactured and then I cut a hole through the base and these are cemented in place and when that's done I'll put the, the base on it, I'll cement the base into there it'll fit underneath. The rest of these pieces have all been trimmed down and cut and they're ready to be cut with the groove and then glued together and then cemented together. Okay, I mixed up the rabbit set mortar this is basically create a solid foundation for this piece so that it has something to stand on. Okay. Okay, that's it for now. When we grab this part down, we found there was a, a boo boo here. Was, there's was not enough material, so we're going to have to fix that. Because it's dry, we can put some of this uh, fiberglass tape on here, and hopefully, it'll stick. It'll stick to itself at least. So I'm going to do it like this. We can always grind this all up. We just need some kind of a reinforcing in there to hold the uh, cement temporarily. That was painted. Grind this all back down again to make it match. Later, that should work. And after this sets, I'll go on the inside and put another coat. I have put two or three coats on here to make this strong enough to match the rest of this piece. Alright, that's set up enough so that we can put a coat on the inside. So I'm going to paint it. We need to strengthen this quite a bit. This is very thin on this side. This is doodad number 7 under construction to show how the diamond cutting discs are used to cut the cement. This is a long, tedious process, so we'll buzz through it. Now, we'll continue with doodad number 9 for more of the construction steps. Alright, I've mixed up a little bit of the mortar. It's in a putty consistency so that I can handle it. Just put a little ring around here where it's going to touch. Alright. Now 
I'm going to go through the process of leveling it again. This table is level, so everything works off of the table. Just to smooth the cement out so that it doesn't show, and then we'll wipe it all down. Fill in the cracks. This, this portion shows putting glitter on the inside of one of these pieces. I have to do that to both of them because you have no access to it after you glue them together. After you cement them together. Everything has to be dry. I'm using DAP Alex Fast Dry Caulk as a glue. It works really well. And I'm using some Spectra Glitter which is uh, okay. And I have to mix the caulk in here to make a, uh, a smooth glue to put on here and then I'll put the stuff on so we'll get to that. The cloth has to be diluted enough to make it paintable but it has to be thick enough to, to uh, collect the glitter. I don't want the glitter to go down into the cracks, and I have to just clean that all out. So here we go. Glitter is messy. Alright. Got it. So now we're going to do the same thing for the inside of the other half of this piece and I have to miss this ring around here where it's going to be cemented together so I don't want to put any glitter on there. Okay, we're going to do that. Now I'll get this outside ring. So this is like this. Okay, I think we're ready to go here. To make up too much of the, of the All right, there we are. And you can see we left the ring around here in order to cement the other piece, the two pieces together. All right, we have one more bit of uh, glitter to do. Is this inside ring here on the on the bottom to match this ring here? So we use the same process we did before. Okay. Oops, missed a spot here. Okay, we're all set. There's no video on how I made this base. It's basically made out of scrap metal. And you have to drill it and, and make everything fit together. And this is a candelabra size uh, LED that's programmable. And it changes colors and it has a controller that goes with it. And just to make things easier for me later, I'm going to install this now before we put the top on. Could do it later, but here we are.
So this is just a piece of metal that's drilled for the for the lamp to fit exactly in the center. This all has to be aligned up and then cemented together. The base has to be removed. You have to there's a plastic cover that fits on here. You remove that. You have to take out this plate, unscrew it, and then uh, replace the bulb. So it's not a big deal. And it's marked with color here so you know which way it goes because it doesn't necessarily fit in either direction. There's that part. It's been designed for this to fit through the hole in the middle and sort of in the center, but it isn't. Sorry about that. Okay, we're ready to attempt to put this piece on. The cement is mixed. I want to put a thin bead around this lip. Okay, I have a mark here that will get covered up. I have a mark here and one more on the top. And I have to measure this to make sure it's even. And we'll tamp it down. Okay, it's time for doing a little bit of coloring on this. We've got all the pieces glued together. I made a, a damper, a tap, tamper paint thing, and this is the color we're going to use is a turquoise and a paintbrush. So we'll see how this all works. All right. Okay, there you are. We'll let that dry. Then the next coat of paint will be orange in the cranks. Okay. Now we're going to begin the last delicate coat, which is painting the inside of the cuts. And I'm using indigo orange, and I won't show you all this, it'll take forever. But anyway, it's a delicate job. Okay, I won't bore you with my highly technical painting technique. It'll be done eventually. Well, it took a while. A few hours, but it's painted. It's finished as far as the color goes. I have one thing left to do, and that's to put in the electrical. I have to turn it upside down for that. And I've already got the hole drilled for the wire. Alright. Crimp this, tie them together, and we're all set. This piece uses a uh, U-band coffee lid for a base to keep from scratching the floor. And that completes this particular doodad. Okay, so we've got the electrical done. Now we'll try it out.
There we go, it works. And it has a little controller that goes with it. And you can play with it and do all kinds of good stuff here, whatever. That's better with the lights out. In this video, I've shown most of the special tools I use and the processes involved in creating these doodad sculptures. This is a completed doodad number 9, showing some of the variations in lighting in daylight and dark. This sculpture Doodad number 10 was also used in some of the construction steps. Glitter was used in the cuts instead of painting. I hope you enjoyed this Doodad's How They're Made video. Thanks for watching.